I'm Grixer. I play Flex. Fragging will begin with Bosco getting the very first kill on to Yeti, and then SSG sweeps into the bomb site. Line of sights cut off by the smokes, and the Sonics find themselves in between a rocks, rock and a hard place. Rexon trying to break free of his prison with cans in it on it. Luke halfway through the diffuser. Lots happening. The action will it be stopped on time. No, the diffuser gets planted. The Sonics try to frag out, but they're inside of the bomb site, getting swatted away by SSG. Grixer on the flank. Oh. He's going big. Two kills. He downs one. All he needs is Bosco, who's still upright. It's a 1v1 with Luke unreachable at this point. He can be secured by Grixer. Find your kill three for you. Best you can do is a 4K. Bosco sitting just near that diffuser and a pre-fire from Grixer is positioned given away by the bomb chassis. Bosco doesn't need to move a muscle. But if Grixer <gasps> swings in this direction and he looks the wrong way, he'll be able to capitalize off of it. Bosco only needs to kill seven more oh! seconds and Grixer knows that. He's got plenty of time by about two seconds. The Sonics make a remarkable comeback off the back of Grixer. Okay, today I want to talk about Pablo Grixer Rebail. I think I'm saying that last name right. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I am. Right. He's been one of the best players in the North American League 2021 season thus far. And he, even through most of the stage, has been one of the better players. Probably overall, he's got to have been, what, like the second best player after Hot and Cold. But in the very first stage, he was the undisputed best player. His rating was quite a bit higher. Some people thought Hot and Cold deserved the MVP that stage, but I think it's Grixer. We'll look at the stats in a little bit here. First, let's go through his uh, Liquipedia page here just to establish sort of the route he took to where he is now. So we'll look at the complete list of results. So way back when he was playing with this team, you know, TBD, like they don't even have a name. So we'll, we'll just look at the, the players that were on it. It was these guys, I don't know, Dirty, Yellow Fever, Grixer, Pox, 217, and Bestia. No idea who these guys are. Uh, they don't have Link Liquipedia things I can go to. So it was, he played Challenger League Closed Qualifier with that team, but to no success, right? And then from there, he starts playing with the guys that he played with for quite a while. And these are the Ape guys, Callout and Forest, most notably Nalay, not sure who that is. But then we have Dream here, and I hadn't realized before I started doing this video that he'd played with Dream before. He plays with them later on, on the Super Sonics, like unofficial Sonics roster. But uh, it was when Super was looking for who to fill the Sonics roster with, and they played the SI... NA qualifier with I think they made it to close quals and then they they lost it there I believe what Parabellum was the the winner of that for SI 2020 right no 2020 that was yeah no that's this year 2021 so right so he starts playing with ape guys and again mostly call out in forest he'll play with for quite a while and then they go through this roster proximity it's the same kind of squad and then Pittsburgh and oh, I need to I need to click on the event not that uh, Pittsburgh Embers, which is pretty much the same guys, but now we have Kilo and Fozo joining, and they play with Fozo for quite a while, and Kilo will drop off shortly, so they play a few events under that, but it's uh, not even like separate events, it's mostly just they try repeatedly in the different qualifiers for USN, and then by the end of it, uh, let's actually look at the six major qualifier here. Still the, still the same squad, actually, and then... They go back to the ape banner because I like I guess Pittsburgh Ember is a real org or something. I mean it otherwise why would it be named like this? But then they go back to being ape and now they actually have a logo, so they, it's uh they, they, they changed it up. So they're back under ape for a little bit, and at this point it is now Abani replacing Kilo. Besides that, it's the same roster. And then they go under the Obey org, I guess. Obey is a real org, I think. Uh, right, same same roster here, Abani, Callout, Grixer, Fo Fozo, Forest. And then they play for a while under that. They play Challenger League Season 10 and they win it. And I think Grixer is like the best player in Challenger League that season. And But again, we'll, we'll get to those stats. I'm, I'm going to look at all the Tier 1 competition he's been in along with uh, this Challenger League season that got him into Pro League. And then they play against the Sonics in relegation and they do relegate him as, as normally happens. So... If you're aware where the story ends, Grixer is currently on the Sonics with Super and some other players. But at, at this point, the only player from from back back here that's still on the Sonics is Super. So he went from relegating Super to being on his team. And they, they skirmish a little bit um, between then and now, too. Because Sonic, well, you'll see. But so they their paths were entwined and whatnot. And now they're 
aligned. Yeah, so right, they relegate him. And now for the final season of Pro League, well, as it was called, it changes into NAL. Uh, they play under the United roster, the United banner, I guess. It's the Obey team still pretty much, but now a little bit different. Let's look at the team they were fielding at that point. So Grixer was playing with Callout, Forest, Yeti, and Alfama. And these are the same guys they'll play with for not only this season, but both stages of the US division, stage one, stage two. Same team. And they get seventh place here, so not the bottom of the barrel, which is evil geniuses, but not great. They go into the US division with the same team, and Evil Geniuses and Luminosity, the orgs, can't come to an agreement, I believe, with Ubisoft at that point, so they drop out and other teams come back in to replace them, which are what Sonics and Disrupt. So it brings it back to eight, and the magical number eight is one that <laughs> United got to know well because they ended up in last place here. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't show a whole lot there. That's significant. It's on the, what, the CGG, I think? Uh, right, they go 0-4, and, and the system is different than the current system we have now and the system that was before this as well. Uh, you play an initial group to determine the winner's group and the loser's group, basically, the upper group, lower group, and then you play in those groups to determine your, your placing. So so they you, win, you, you play to two wins or two losses. So they got two losses in the first group to Space Station and Disrupt, I think, and then in the second group they lost to Tempo and Sonics, I want to say putting them in dead last and then curiously it says eighth place here but i think they technically got seventh right and or not even technically i guess the eighth is the technical part so they go two and four so in their initial group they go one and two which is not it doesn't matter how well or not well you do in the group really is uh well regardless except for if you get two wins or two losses it doesn't matter really if you go two and one or two and oh i guess it changes your seating for the next group a little bit but uh you know you really just care about getting the top group or bottom group. Top group, you're guaranteed top four. Bottom group, maximum fifth place. Anyway, so they get one and two. They get put in the losers group. And then they go one and two again. But they do, that does put them above tempo. So tempo, you know, got put into their group. I think they went one and two in their first group as well. Beating Ox... Or not... Yeah, Oxygen. And I think United's win was against Sonics. In the first group. And then United beats tempo. Putting tempo at 0 and 2 in the second group. In the losers group. So it should have been Tempo at 8th place, but I think the reason it, it's listed as 8th place here is at some point United and Tempo, both of the orgs, they drop out of of uh, the NAL, I guess, and the teams are just left hanging. They need new orgs or otherwise other orgs will come in with other teams to replace them, I think. But I think maybe United did it first, so it auto-put them at 8th. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I, it should be 7th, I believe, um, based on actual performance and not on logistics. So then we move into the FPL era, which, uh, I mean, you can see he gets fifth, but then he gets first, 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 uh, the absolute FPL demon. And we'll look at uh, the stats for that as well, but that's at the that's the very end. We'll look at that. Right. And then after this, I, as I said, United drops the roster, so they have to find a new org or I, at some point it was, I think, just decided that they, that whole team just gonna get replaced but then luckily all of them get picked up by the Sonics except for Alfama who goes off to APEC only player to play in three different regions I think played in EU APEC and NA and he's on Fnatic to this day but anyway so Grixer, Yeti, uh, Rexon and Kanzen go to go to the Sonics but well uh, I haven't mentioned those names yet right Rexon and Kanzen they replace Callout and Forest between stage one and stage two so finally, that whole union's broken up, so now it's just uh, the longest standing player he's played with is Yeti, who he played all the way through United and currently onto Sonics with. And then, right, now they're Sonics, and they got second place in Stage 1, pretty good, barely missed out on first place. And then Stage 2, they, they got third place, they went to the Major, didn't do too hot of the Major, and now they are currently sitting in, I believe, third place in Stage 3, but Stage 3 still has two more players to go, so we'll see what goes down with that. Right, that's pretty much the path he took, so I mean, let's just look back at it. One time he did all these little things at the start, uh, Ape and Proximity 1, and then he was on Pittsburgh Embers for a while, Obey for a while, United for a while, and then looking for a team, and finally got onto the Sonics where he has been killing it. I don't think he was especially notable of a player back then, like, uh, I mean, and mostly because United was like a, a bottom tier team in the league. Uh, he, he held his own, like, uh, 
I don't know if he's ever even gone negative on rating besides at the major, so within within NA tier one competition, uh, you know, just within the region. I don't think he's ever put up a negative rating, or maybe slightly below one. I guess we'll I guess we'll find out because I did look at the stats before, but I don't actually quite remember. So let's move on and take a look at his performance in some of those competitions. So first up, we have Challenger League Season 10 for North America. This is when he was playing under Obey with Abenai, Callout, Thozo, and Forest. And yeah, they get they get first place. And as you can see, Grixer is not by far, but uh, besides first and second place, he has they are by far the, the top two. And it's actually Yeti who would eventually become his teammate. Well, just right after this, I guess, on United and then long standing all the way up to the current with Sonics. But yeah, as you can see here, I mean, 1.35 and 1.33, much better than anyone else. KD, I mean, plus 63, that, you know, running over 1.5 KD, 1.6 KD or whatever. Great on entry, just really great across the board. Best player that, that season, it's gotta be, right? Uh, playing IQ and Mozzie. And then we will move to, what is it? Pro League Season 11 North America. So, right, that was Challenger League. And, and of course, not anybody can destroy Challenger League, but it's a lot easier to beat up on Challenger League teams than it is to on pro teams. And he, like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he was not unaware of that before, but certainly if he was unaware of that before, he now learned. United goes 3 3 and 8. So, three win, three draws, eight losses. Not doing too well. A little bit better than Evil Geniuses did. And we have to go a decent ways down for Grixer, but he's still, you know, he's still fairly high. Of there's eight teams, so there's 40 players here, and maybe even slightly more players because some played, uh, you know, not all of the maps for their team. Some players were brought in partway through the season, and therefore some dropped out. So as far as all of this goes, he's still like what top 15 or so it looks like. Plus 14, uh, minus one on entry, so even on entry, not terrible, but. Still positive on kills, and then you know his stats are his stats are more, mostly fine across the board. This was a very competitive season within NA uh, at the very top, at least. Space Station, TSM, and Dark Zero, as you can see, are all very close in points. And then there's a bit of a drop off to Reciprocity, and then even a bigger, or well, not as big of a drop off, but still a drop off to Tempo, Luminosity, United, Evil Geniuses. So you can see the top half of the the league and the bottom half of the league. Uh, so Grixer held his own, and they stay alive. And first season in Pro League, you know, nothing to get too worked up about. Obviously, you'd like to absolutely kill it like some teams have when they first came to Pro League, but it doesn't always happen. Still get more chances, especially this season. Nobody actually gets relegated, but as I said before, Luminosity and Build Geniuses do not transfer over to the new, the new system. So U.S. Division 2020 Stage 1. So this is... In not quite the modern era because the system changes again, but uh, this is like the NAL, right? US division specifically. So where is Grixer here? 1.02, so about the same as last season. He actually, he goes negative on, on kills, which is unfortunate. Missed out by one kill. He does go positive on entry this time, which is good. Playing Capitao and Smoke, which, and a lot of, like, as you can see here, there's a ton of Smoke and Jaeger, and that's just because defender picks, especially going back in time, are just like not, are just a lot more diverse compared to attackers. Your attackers are um, just sort of the role you keep playing, but defenders, you like change based on strats and stuff. And so there's a lot of players that played a lot of ops, but their most played is still Jaeger or Smoke. So of course that's listed there. And then Capitao is curious. Don't see too much Capitao these days. Saw it a lot more back back then. I mean, Bosco easily. Ricks are all uh, playing more Capitao than anything else on attack. So yeah, not uh, not too terrible, but this what and, and especially considering his team was getting demolished here, is he is he the highest rated player on his team? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, Yeti down here still holding a 1.0 rating, which is fine. Yeah, and, and again, right, this was the 0-4. They didn't win a match. Uh, I think they probably won a map, right? Yeah, yeah, because otherwise they would have only played eight. No, that's not him. Ten. They won two maps, I guess, and lost eight maps. That's tough, but uh, I don't know. Okay, stats considering. And then we'll move on to stage two. And now they get, they do boss up a little bit here. They dropped Callout and Forest, moving into a new look for United. They pick up Kanzen and Rexen. Rexen, a, an established like gunner, pretty good player. I think one season he, he did really, really well in CL and he had been in pro league prior to this. He was on Luminosity, one of the team, you know, so one of the teams that didn't make it to the league. And then Kanzen came straight from T3, didn't even play T T2. And I think at this point, Kanzen has proven himself as a good player in T1. Not not this point uh, in the video, but this point in real life I'm talking about. 
So, right, where where is he now? Grixer right here. Rexon slightly above him. And Rexon, <laughs> Rexon went crazy on it. Like, look at plus, plus 19. Let me just, I mean, it's not about Grixer so much, but like, look at that. Look at the gap. This is the team that ends up in seventh place this stage. Uh -huh. Eighth place this stage. However you want to. If you want to go with the, the real way or not. But, go back to Grixer. Uh, yeah, plus 17, so he did better than last stage, but then back to negative on entry. He's, he does a lot of entry with 40 entry duels. Um, so, an okay stat line, you know, getting above a 1 is still good. He's playing Sledge and Valkyrie here, which is an interesting changeup. Was just playing Capital Smoke last stage. And then we'll move on to... Oh, that's not it. I was looking at... I was looking for something here. Um... Stage one of the NAL. So now this is the current system. This was stage one. This one was a little bit lower stakes in that they weren't playing for the major, but they were still playing for money and a lot of SI points. And this is the stage where Grixer becomes the monster that we know him as today. So we don't have to go far down to find him. He is right, right here, number one. So a lot of people argued that hot and cold deserved the MVP this stage. And just looking at the stats, uh, like, and you'd be, I mean, if you didn't know anything about what happened this stage, you'd, you'd say, why, why would you, why would you say that? Obviously, Grixer stats are way better. And very, very impressive. Like this is, this has to be one of the most impressive season performances from a player ever. I mean, maybe not on the absolute short list, but I think it's easy to say. 1.33, it's just so high. Like if some of the other ones that we were looking at was only like a, like the highest was like a 1.2 or something. And of course it might've been brought down. This was only over the course of eight games, eight maps in eight games. Other seasons had, uh, old, old pro league season were like double round robin and the US division before this was best two out of three. So there were a lot more maps played generally. So it might've been harder to maintain this consistency, but still it's uh, eight maps and a hundred kills in eight maps. That is insane. 1.05 KPR is great. Right, uh, Grixer hot and cold thing. Hot and Cold was on a decidedly worse team than the Sonics, it appears, to stage. So, right, Grixer here. Yeti is the next player from the Sonics for the stage, and then Rex and Kanzen, and Super down here. And then if we look at Hot and Cold's team, Mirage, Hot and Cold's here. Then the next player, you have to go all the way down here to Benji Moolah, and Dream, Nick, Loading. So, I mean, I would I would argue against, I think Grixer, right, he, and I'm... If I remember right, he got MVP for the stage. He deserved it, absolutely. Uh, Sonics end in second place. Mirage ends in third place. And it did look like Hot and Cold dragged them over the line. But if you even look, I mean, right, like Super is lower rated here than, than Mirage is lower, lowest rated player. But then there's another Mirage. And then, so the, the Sonics are like pretty fairly rated, fairly well rated for the most part. And it makes sense. They got uh, quite a few more points than Mirage. I think, oh, I don't actually remember how many they ended up with. Mirage went on a crazy win streak at the end of the season. Uh, they lost a bunch and then they won a bunch. But if, if you just, I mean, if you just look at the gap between Grixer and the next player on his team, like look at the rating difference. To Yeti, it's a 0.21 and hot and cold to his next two, it's a point, where is Benji? It's a 0.22. It's only a 0 0.01 difference in the gap between them and the next player on their team. So, I, I mean, so how can, I, th I think it's difficult to say that Grisher didn't deserve it this season. Like, he had more kills, he had fewer deaths, he had more entry kills and a higher entry differential, he had a higher cost, higher KPR, higher survival rate, and then what did Hot and Cold have? He had, like, one fewer entry death, um, one more 1vx, and one more plant, and that's it. Um, and <laughs> one more percent higher headshot rate, nice. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you thought Hot and Cold's impressive, performance was impressive i mean you can say it sure and yeah he was on a worse performing team that stage but um i, th I think i think the amount better that grixer did than hot and cold makes up for the the circumstances so i think grixer absolutely deserved stage one mvp and then moving on we have stage two which is just not too long ago at all this is the most recently completed stage of the nal we are on stage three but it's not yet complete so Rixer, a little bit lower down here, right? Re Rexon actually uh, replaced him as the second highest rated player. So it, you know, Hot and Cold took him over, but Grixer's still down here, still in the top 10, 1.18, you know, plus 27, positive on entry, really high cost, 
all this stuff. It's great. Uh, he still did well, just not the absolute savaging that he did in the first stage, but pretty close. Sonics end up in third place of stage instead of second. And then we'll look at the Mexico Major. And this is the one instance we have here of Grixer struggling. And it's it's not just all on him. His entire team struggled. He was still the second highest rated player on his team. But this is the only time on this in this video where he's going to put up a uh, negative rating. Negative being you know, less than 1.0 in this case. And where, where did I miss him? Where is he? Full stats. The Mexico Major. Why am I not seeing it? Rex in there, so... Oh, oh, oh man, oh, because it's lower than I thought. I thought it was slightly under 1.9. I thought it was like a 0.98. It's actually a 0.91, which is not great. Um, the low cost really hurting him, because he did. He, he only went minus one on KD, he went plus one on entry. Um, but the low cost and then low survival, right? And it, this comes off the back of his team losing almost every game. They won. Their first game that they played against Team 1 in overtime, and they lost five in a row, the, the, the remaining five of their games, which is very unfortunate. Uh, I do hope to see Sonics perform better internationally in the future, and hopefully hopefully in Sweden, because it looks like, unless something weird happens, that they will be going, along with Space Station, Oxygen, and TSM. But it's we're, you know we're gonna have to see a lot better performance from them like it just they weren't used to i i suppose their biggest issue they weren't used to playing against these other styles of teams because i mean how could they be the only one that had ever played in international land i believe is super maybe yeti uh, i think it's just super so going to their first like big events the whole team besides super and they had to not not only that but having to play against other play styles they did have the advantage of having played on LAN quite a lot but you know still different environment in the in the server yeah uh, if not uh, out of it and then now we catch up to the present we are at uh, north american league stage three which again is ongoing there's still two more play days to be played sonics are sitting in third place and how is grixer doing he's in third place uh well his team and then also in terms of rating so it doesn't look like he's going to be able to make it back to the top although it's possible if he does well and these other two players do poorly but man the like these are out of these world ratings. It's going to be hard to hard to surpass that. So, right, plus 24 on KD, plus 7 on entry, 72% cost, 1.0 KPR. Like, it's just great stats. He's uh, on the front line a lot. He'll be playing entry or second entry or whatever with, with Yana and then doing whatever on defense. But, uh, yeah, just really high standard of play set by Grixer throughout the entire season. Like, uh, he, did really, he did really crazy well in, in stage one, then he did... A little bit poorly, a little bit more poorly, but still obviously incredible, incredibly in stage two. And then even even closer to his stage one performance. I mean, he is a 1.27 here. He had a 1.33 rating there. And then finally, let's look at his time in FPL. Oops, go back to season one, actually. Uh, right. FPL started and they do it's like seasons are like once once a month or something, I think. So this is back in October 2020. So Grixer started out humbly, fifth place, and they were playing a ton of FPL back then. Uh, it's, you know, iconic having 126 games, Butters over 100 games, Benji over 100 games. Um, but Grixer ends up in fifth place. Nice 250 bones for him, but he actually he has the highest win rate of anybody. So it's I mean it's curious if he had just played more because FPL does reward not only a high win rate but playing a lot of games. So you get because you can. I think you get more points for a normal win than you do for a normal loss. So if you just, I mean, if you play more than any, like a lot more than anybody else and you maintain just a one win rate, I, I think you get to uh, just get a lot of points. And then you also get extra points if you're on a, a certain length of streak or whatever. But anyways, fifth place, but highest win rate, uh, Forrest and Alec are, are pretty close here, but 68% for him. And then in season two, he takes over the world F FPL, absolute FPL demon. Just, I mean, the rain, the reigning king. Although he does, as you can, as you'll see, he uh, disappears. So 82% win rate, like, uh, in incredible. He's doing this against tier one and tier two players, and as you can see, not a, a whole ton of tier one players playing a lot, but still some, and especially his teammates. You know, Kanz and Rexon are here, old teammate Forrest. So yeah, Grix are going absolutely colossal. It only took him 28 matches to secure first place, and he's almost 60 points ahead of the next one who's like 50 points ahead of the next one but then it's like all really pretty close uh so 
not especially close for Grish this season. He went, he went colossal for sure. And then moving into season three, he does it once again, but this time 72% win rate, a bit lower. And he play, they play a lot of matches here. I don't know why the all of these guys play so many. Like there's lower numbers down here, but a bunch of numbers above 100. So I'm not sure why FPL popped off in particular that season, or maybe because this was like was this off season or something for play? I'm not sure. I don't know. But, right, 72% win rate, over 100 games. Uh, the points, <laughs> way, way further apart. Even He is over, you know, over 200 points ahead of the next place. And more than that for the rest of these guys. So, absolute uh, colossal performance. Season 4. Does it again. 85% win rate. He was on a 13 win streak at the end of the season. So, right, 85% win. He, he goes 17 and 3. Like, what? <laughs> how you, how he do that? Another 2,000 bones for him. But then, when the world feared him most, disappeared. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why Grixer stopped playing FPL. I guess he had uh, better things to do with his time, or something. He didn't care about getting a free two thousand bones. Of course, not free, but uh, he made it look pretty free, didn't he? So, right, that's that's pretty well the history of Grixer, and not a whole lot of analysis in it. But hopefully, anybody who watches this video who doesn't know a lot about maybe maybe they know about the league but they don't know a lot about the players maybe this will help educate and perhaps I'll do this for other players as well I have one other player I have it planned out for but I have a more elaborate uh, thing and I've been working on it for a little bit so we'll see about that I guess I did I did that hot and cold video as well uh, yesterday the the assassination assassination of TSM by the hero hot and cold which I hadn't thought of that title originally when I started making it it was gonna be called um, hot and cold dunking on TSM for, for three stages straight and I almost went with that anyways even after I thought about this title because um, in case hot and cold does it again next stage if he dunks on TSM again next stage then I can you know make a video called hot and cold dunking on TSM for four stages straight but I'll have to think of something else if that happens so again yeah so that that's that's Grixer uh we'll have to see how he fares in the future especially internationally because he didn't do too well and his team didn't do too well at the Mexico major but let's give him one more chance internationally see how well they do but I mean still they're maybe not absolutely eating up the NAL but they are decidedly one of the best teams and finally well established in that top four it would seem and so with all of that being said, let's do the call to action stuff. You know, hit me with the like, the subscribe, the comment, and the multifunction comment in that you could uh, request me to do this for a particular player. You could request another type of video. You could critique the way I've done this video. And yeah, sure, maybe multiple ways to critique. I could probably have more exciting things on the screen or, uh, you know, in input clips or, or like edit the video or something. But uh, yeah, I, it is what it is. You got you got the intel, didn't you? So, right. I guess that's going to do it. I will catch you in the next one. Concussions in for Grixer, but neither of those are going to land. No early blast, but he knows someone's still here. It's Kino, and he's been down. Ready for the second angle. He claims Yaga's life as well. Does the third come through? It does! Oh, it's the train for Grixer!